This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook. Where to begin? Master Orm, don't trust your memory. Real power lies in subtleties. Things we often miss until we go back and review the details. That is why you must record these details. I've never written a journal before. It's too much work, you know. Something you've got to do every day. Come rain or shine. Or else you start to feel guilty. Of course. That's why they, what they tell me. I've got to start one and keep it every day. Discipline, they say. That's what I need. A magical journal. The record of my magical findings. Does that make sense? As weird as it is to admit, yeah, it does. It wouldn't have once. If you laid that load on me a few months ago, I'd have laughed in your face and possibly began plotting some elaborate prank that teach you not to go around spewing hippie bullshit. What can I say? I was young, stupid, and asleep. Damn punk kid. So here it is. The journal. It's supposed to be just for me. Never to be shown to anyone. But I know Master Orm and Protestus will sneak a peek just to check on my progress. Hell, they might be watching now for all I know. I don't have a spell that would let me know if they were. And if I started casting, they would cancel the scrying window before I could see it. So if you're reading this, honored masters, go so screw yourselves. Scrying, the arcanum of space. I'm trying to learn it. I've got the basics down. All that stuff about distance being an illusion, that everything is really one point, blah blah blah. I took basic philosophy in school, Plato and all that shit, but none of that comes close to the esoteric mind buff of this magic stuff. The point is, I'm supposed to be keeping a scrying record along with this journal. You see, when you cast spells at things you can't see or hear, you have to reach out to their patterns. Again, distance is an illusion, so the difficulty is not the mileage, but the picture you get in your mind about whatever it is you're affecting. The hazier the picture, the harder the spell. Scrying record is a collection of photos and drawings that act as mnemonics for reading out to those things. Smart mages don't keep them. They've learned to keep it all in their heads. But kindergartners like me need something to start with. That's why I've got to keep start keeping clippings and shit. Give me something of reference in case I need to view things from far off. Even if you think they're meaningless, you are entwined in threads of destiny, Arctos. But this is not always obvious enough even to those with the eyes to see it. Only by reading the record of days does the pattern become visible. Alright, enough digression. I'm told I need to start with a memory of my life up to now. Hey, what I did with my summer vacation essay. Except that it includes my entire life up to now. Why? That's what I asked. Arctos, Arto, the little bear. That's what Morvran called me. My shadow name. You can't use real names in this business. Scrying again. Sympathetic magic, it is called. If they know your real name, you're screwed. It's way harder to reach into a pattern if you don't know its name. So we use these handles and call names like truckers or on CB radios or fighter pilots or hell, superheroes, right? Most of us choose 
our new names, but I was too freaked out at the time. Morgan gave me mine. What the hell? I like it. Morgan is this old Sean Connery type who saved my ass when I was having a, the worst bad trip in existence. He's the guy who brought me here. The guy who inducted me into the Mysterium. I'll talk about him some more later. If I'm going to do this thing, I might as well get things down in chronological order. I, I was born 20 years ago, give or take a few years. I'm not list, listing my birthday, social security number, or name, all for the reasons I mentioned above. My parents were almost AWOL in the attention and the affection department. They aren't bad people. Just narcissistic yuppies who became dot commers and then Republican readheads. I was often left to my own devices growing up and developed a somewhat erratic moral compass, as my school counselor said. I did the whole obligatory juvenile delinquent shoplifting thing, but I never got caught, so never learned my lesson. I barely squeaked into college, mainly because my parents were too mortified to have a non-college educated child. They threw money at the dean of this small urban arts college. No, I'm not listing its name either. Hire a private detective if you want. I like doodling enough, but... I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in my life. That's when I met Sigmund. He was this weird outsider who was into magic and crawly and other sorts of occult shit. I say magic in quotes because it wasn't magic, not really. It was what sleepers think is magic. It's what I thought was magic. It was cool and elitist and gave us all sorts of excuses to look down our noses at all the rubes who weren't clued in. God, we were such pricks. Anyway, Sigmund was a neo-goth. He wore makeup and had long nails and had this keen ability to turn verbal assaults back at its attackers, making them say stupid things without realizing it. I started hanging out with him and learned magic. I thought I'd finally found it. What I'd always been looking for but never knew it. Something about it. The imagery. The ritual. The whole atmosphere. Clicked deep in a way nothing else ever had. I was in serious danger of losing my jaded Gen X credentials and actually becoming interested in something meaningful for once in my life. One night, Sigmund started getting on my case. Accusing me of being a willy white shit who was afraid to evoke a goetic demon. I couldn't let that go. So me, Sigmund, and another kid who hung out with us, this twerp named Thomas, pulled out the lesser key of Solomon and started an evocation. Threads of destiny, Arctos, threads of destiny. Things got strange. It was like shadows were cloaking the room, but not so you could point to. Everyone felt this presence. Thomas freaked and ran, but me, feeling cocky, I commanded the entity to help me pass my exams in the coming week. I got a definite sense of the response, and then it was gone. We laughed and went out for some beer, considering the whole thing a lark. I was too lazy to study, and I knew I'd missed a lot of questions on the test, but I still came through with A's. Weird. When Sigmund heard about it, he demanded we do the ritual again, but this time he wanted to bring along his magus, the guy who introduced him to Crowley and Magic. The next night, I met the guy, or queen, more like, skinny black clad, and introduced himself as 
Agraboda. This whole lame ass Sophne. He wanted to see how well I could perform evocations and offered his own book of demons, one I had never heard of. This wasn't your standard S.L. McGregor, Mathers, or Golden Dawn stuff. More like Lovecraft. Unpronounceable names and disgust imagery. Ag Agboda pointed to this demon in the book and explained how its name was pronounced, and he dared me to bring him forward. I did the same thing as the time before, but with the new name. It wasn't like before at all. This huge crack appeared in the wall of the apartment and then widened as if shoved apart by hands. I couldn't see. Something dark and blurry came out and fixed its bug eyes on me. I swear, fucking bug eyes. Like a fly or something. I almost busted out laughing, thinking it was a prank. Something in my gut clenched my ass so tight. I almost puked. Ekraboda cried out, This is your lord, Balto. The thing reached out, something that looked sort of like an arm, and I completely freaked out. I dodged behind Sigmund, and the arm grabbed him instead. It flung some Sigmund into the crack of the wall. He was screaming bloody murder, and me, for once in my life, felt a real pang of guilt. I lunged over to the wall to grab him. He was hanging there sideways, his hands barely holding on to the wall. This powerful wind yanking at him from somewhere inside. I tried to reach him, but he couldn't hold on. He was sucked away, gone. It's not easy to fight that. I thought I'd gotten a handle on it. But now I had to fucking go and write about it. Shit. Okay. I'm going to finish this thing. I heard something behind me and turned just in time to get the hell out of the way of the bug eye thing as it tried to shove me into the crack. So I started at it, still not really believing what was happening. I suddenly knew what it was. I got this vision. I don't know what else to call it, of this hierarchy of built beings from archangels on high to demons down below. And I somehow knew that the thing didn't belong to any of those levels. It wasn't from around here. It didn't belong here at all. And as that sank in, that what was happening was more real than real, and that the thing could snuff me out of this life in any life hereafter. My hair went completely white. At least that's the moment I think it happened, looking back. My hair was black, but now it started white. And then I wasn't in the room anymore. I was in this black, featureless plane with dark clouds so low I wasn't even sure where the, where was the sky. Before me was this skyscraper-like building, except it didn't have any windows. It looked like it was made of some dark metal iron. The door was open and this faint light came from inside. I was in a trance watching myself walk towards it. No, that's not it. It was more like a part of me chose to go in, but it was the part of me I didn't know. The part that knew better than and didn't ask permission from the rest of the that normally made the decisions. The idiot rest of me that got me into that mess in the first place. The inside looked like a torture chamber or dungeon that bizarrely clean and all well shiny. Maybe it was more like a fetish room or something. 
kinky like that. Except it didn't feel that way. It was way more serious. There were chains and manacles on the walls, dry blood all around them. In the wall itself, carved into the metal, for Christ's sakes, were names. Some of them were in English, some in Arabic, and some in, I don't know, Chinese or Japanese, or something, all sorts of languages. Then I noticed this confessional, like you see in Catholic churches. I went in and sat down. There was no priest. But I was just starting. But I just started pouring it out, crying like a baby, letting out all the bad shit I'd ever done, and begging for a second chance. Knowing that the bug-eyed monster was going to eat me when it was all over. When I opened my eyes, the confessional and all the change were gone. The place was pure and clean, and there was a new name on the wall, carved in perfect lines, my name. Then I was back in the apartment, the thing coming at me like no time passed at all. But I wasn't scared anymore. In fact, I wanted to kick this thing's ass. That was when a guy on a motorcycle came. Things were different. I knew it in my bones, keeping my soul. Crashing through the window, this bike hit the ground and twisted to a complete stop right as he raised his big fucking gun and shot the creature right in its head. Pow! Perfect aim, but not with a bullet. It looked like some sort of Star Wars blaster bolt or something. The thing unraveled. I mean, it literally fell to pieces and they disintegrated. A crack in the wall slammed shut with a boom. The motorcycle guy pointed his gun at that angler Boda who scrolled back, or scowled back. Fuck you, angler Boda, the guy said. I couldn't see. His face behind the helmet visor. True, Zeno, Agrabota said. I'll take the boy and go. You summon a goddamn devourer on my turf, and I'm just and I just let let it go. Get the fuck out. Alone. But we'll see who's top. Agrabota glared at me. He left. He wasn't happy. But Zeno looked at me. Stupid shit. Get the hell out of my campus. You can't just leave me, I cried. All the terror and fear flooded back in all of a sudden. The high I got from being in the Iron Tower was gone. Should have thought of that before you ordered takeout. Get out. He pointed his gun at me, so I ran. I've never been homeless before. I had no idea how to go about it. I wound up in the woods, curled up in a cave, freezing my ass off and whining in fear. Next thing I know, this dude was tapping me on with a walking stick. Wake up, a little bear. Hibernation is over. More of grin, of course. He gave me some food and explained what had happened and who I had been dealing with. He knew this Agrabota guy from way back and had been keeping an eye on him. My head was swimming, but I knew this Aragorn dude was telling the truth. He was a complete stranger, but I knew I could trust him. I didn't know why. I begged him to teach me how to defend myself against the demon shit and babbled something about the Iron Tower, chains and manacles, confession and my name on the wall. He listened patiently and without surprise and then shook his head. You have a destiny. I can see the mark on your soul. You awaken at the watchtower of the Iron Gauntlet. Your path is not the same as mine. 
there are others of my order who can teach you. And so he brought me here to this elite private school. The headmaster, Master Orong, didn't seem happy to see either of us, and even less happy when Morgan told him about my experience. Boy, are you prepared to become something you are clearly not. Master of his own soul. I knew what to say, even if I didn't know what the fuck was going on. So here I am, writing this journal <clears throat> only a few weeks into my training as a mage of the Mysterium Order. That's what I'm supposed to call myself now. Mage, one of the awakened. Before my name was written into the Watchtower, I was asleep. I was what people in this business call a sleeper. Now I'm awake. My name is etched into the substance of a higher world. The supernal world, they call it. My watchtower is just one of five. Each of them in different places that all sound like they've come out of a fairy tale book. It's the other way around though. Fairy tales and myths and all that stuff are just echoes of the reality that is more real than the world we live in. Ours is called the fallen world. Come on, we all know it deep down. This place is shit, right? Religions have been saying it for years. We're living in only half a world. One that's missing its most vital component. So, that's what awakens, they say. The soul, the part of us that belongs up there in the higher world. The ones came down here in the material world for shits and giggles. But it got a track. We all did. The worlds were split apart, and now there's this giant abyss between them. That's what I looked into. That's where the creature came from. That's where Sigmund went. Shit, I'd do anything to get him back. The guilt is too much sometimes. I mean, he was a bit of a poser, but so was I. He didn't deserve that. Anyway, there's a whole occult underground of real magicians. Not the fake Sigmund and I were. Nobody knows about it, just us mages. Sleepers are ignorant, and there's some who want them to stay that way. Unless they will awaken, in which case, <clears throat> they're us. But until then, they're dangerous. They've got a piece of the abyss in their souls, and it wants to drag us all down. If they even see us do our thing, magic, the shit hits the fan, making our spells go haywire, driving us mad, even altering reality around us in ways we don't want. When you reach up to the higher world to bring down a spell, you have to reach through the abyss. Sometimes you bring some of it with you. Sleepers can make it happen just by watching you. Creepy. That's why they can't know about us, about magic, about the deep shit the world is in. Master Orm and Potestas don't want the, want that Agrabo to creep opening any scrying windows into this place. They've got wards up and all, but they worry that he'll keep watching. They've got me practicing this thing called occultation, the art of hiding yourself from magical spies. You learn how to cloak your aura, your magical signature, what your soul looks like. Keep people from getting a pinpoint on you from afar. It means I have to cut myself off from my previous life. Hallelujah. I hardly ever saw my parents in any way. I didn't have a whole lot of friends. At least nobody is close. It's all behind me now. 
difficult in obscurity. I don't exist, man. I don't even have a name. I'm a mage now. I can do anything. This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook. Roger Hansen on Patreon and Gaming with Infamous on Discord. Thanks for stopping by. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Anchor. Breaker. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public. Spotify. Support us on Patreon. And check us out on Discord. All the links can be found in the video description below. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.